Join in singing number 473, Hear Us, Almighty Lord, number 473. of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life.
Let us pray. By your help, we beseech you, Lord our God. May we walk eagerly in that same charity with which, out of love for the world, your Son handed himself over to death. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, who opens a way in the sea and a path in the mighty waters, who leads out chariots and horsemen, a powerful army, till they lie prostrate together, never to rise, snuffed out and quenched like a wick. Remember not the events of the past, the things of long ago, consider not, see, I am doing something new. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? In the desert I make a way, in the wasteland rivers. Wild beasts honor me, jackals and ostriches. For I put water in the desert and rivers in the wasteland for my chosen people to drink. The people whom I formed for myself, that they might announce my praise. The word of the Lord. Oh. 
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, I consider everything as a loss because of the supreme good of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. For, this, for his sake, I have accepted the loss of all things, and I consider them so much rubbish that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having any righteousness of my own based on the law, but that which comes through faith in Christ, the righteousness from God, depending on faith to know him and the power of his resurrection and the sharing of his sufferings by being conformed to his death, if somehow I may attain the resurrection from the dead. It is not that I have already taken hold of it or have already attained perfect maturity, but I continue my pursuit in hope that I may possess it, since I have indeed been taken possession of by Christ Jesus. Brothers and sisters, <clears throat> I, for my part, do not consider myself to have taken possession. Just one thing, forgetting what lies behind, but straining forward to what lies ahead, I continue my pursuit toward the goal, the prize of God's upward calling in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus went to the Mount of Olives, but early in the morning he arrived again in the temple area, and all the people started coming to him, and he sat down and taught them. Then the scribes and the Pharisees brought a woman who had been caught in adultery and made her stand in the middle. They said to him, Teacher, this woman was caught in the very act of committing adultery. Now in the law, Moses commanded us to stone such women. So what do you say? They said this to test him so that they could have some charge to bring against him. Jesus bent down and began to write on the ground with his finger. But when they continued asking him, he straightened up and said to them, Let the one among you who is without sin be the first to throw a stone at her. Again he bent down and wrote on the ground. And in response, they went away one by one, beginning with the elders. So he was left alone with the woman before him. Then Jesus straightened up and said to her, Woman, where are they? Has no one condemned you? She replied, No one, sir. Then Jesus said, Neither do I condemn you. Go, and from now on, do not sin any more. The Gospel of the Lord.
to welcome all of you here this evening, especially those of you who are here because of the Women's Conference. Uh, wonderful to see you, and I hope it was a fruitful weekend, and I hope it's not just a fruitful weekend. That would be very disappointing if the only fruit lasted for two days, because that's a temptation to listen and say, oh, that was interesting. I would like to hear more of that sometime and have it not really change us and not have it go more deeply within us, asking the Holy Spirit uh, to finish the work of these days together. That's my challenge to all of you, to beg the Spirit, who is the healing balm of Jesus, his breath, that brings healing and hope, and to ask the Holy Spirit uh, to bring to fruition, to bring about the real fruit that he desires from the weekend that you spent together. And my challenge, I gave it last year, you didn't quite pull it off, I told you last year, I don't want you here again if you don't bring someone with you who's not here. So I'll let you pass this year, I suppose, because of COVID, we're blaming everything on it. So, But not next year. I want you to bring someone with you who's not here. Preferably someone who doesn't practice so much anything. Don't be afraid to invite others so that what we've received, we freely give. And that it's not just for ourselves to become puffed up Catholic experts, but instead to be real missionaries sent out to such a hurting world. So that's my challenge. I'll know it, because if you're not standing room only, you didn't double in size. Some weeks back, I was at a young family's home for dinner, and they had some young kids. And watching the children again reminded me just how much little children love to play the game of hiding behind something. Remember that? Watching little kids hide behind a curtain or a table or just behind their hands, pretending that they're invisible where they're expecting us to say, where are you? I can't see you. And that where all the adults are supposed to look for them, even though we all know where they're at. But they love it. They love the fact that they think they're hiding from us and that we can't see them and that we're looking for them. And I believe what they like the most about it is when they see us adults say, ah, there you are, with a big smile on our face, and a joy to see them. Then they hide again to see if we can find them, to see that excitement that we were worried when we couldn't find them and we're so happy to finally see them again. That's nice when kids do that. It's a good little game. But when we adults close our eyes or hide, it's no game at all. We're pretending, just like kids, that things are not really as they are, that we're much more in full view than we expect or hope or think. We're pretending that we're treating everyone kindly when in fact we're not. We're pretending that we are forgiven, and yet we fail to forgive and wonder why forgiveness doesn't sink in to our lives. We pretend to be the saint, that the others are the bigger sinners, I suppose. It's very easy to pretend. The reasons we use to justify our sins are actually no more convincing than a child's pretending to be invisible in front of all of us. 
And yet, as I said, the children who play the game have something great to teach us because it's so nice for them to open their eyes or to be found with a smiling, welcoming, loving, there you are. In the gospel today, we hear of the woman caught in adultery. As she stands before the crowd in the middle, she must have wished that she would have been invisible. In fact, she probably tried to hide herself by keeping her head down and covering her face, hoping to be invisible. As that dialogue carried on, she must have tried to hide from her sin. And then when the crowd leaves and Jesus speaks to her, she couldn't hide anymore. What's Jesus going to do? He looks at her with deep love and says, there you are. There you are. The real you. The you I have come to die for. The you that is worth saving. The you that has been dragging these chains with you for years and years and years. I came to set you, the captive, free. Many times we're afraid of the shame that we think will come if we open our eyes and honestly see ourselves as we really are. But we need not be afraid. Lent is our time to finally open our eyes and to come out of hiding, allowing God in the person of Jesus to say to us, deep in our hearts, ah, there you are. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. 
I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. My brothers and sisters in Christ, confident that God will hear us, we offer our prayers for the church and for the world. For the church, that we may enter the coming holy days with renewed and steadfast hearts, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Francis, our Pope, and for Austin Anthony, our Bishop, that they will guide us as a devoted shepherds in the way of salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an end to war and the beginning of peace that all who are affected, for an increased desire to place our lives in the service of our sisters and brothers, may we be given the grace to learn obedience through our sufferings, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are suffering from the result of war and natural disasters, and for those who are lost in the struggles of life, that Christ, the Supreme Shepherd, may restore and console them and crown them with glory, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the protection of human life at all stages and for the end of the culture of death, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We remember the prayers written in our Book of Intentions and those we hold in the silence of our heart. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God of love, our refuge and our strength, you see us, you know us, and you love us. Hear the prayers of your church and grant us today what we ask you in faith through Christ our Lord.
pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Hear us, Almighty God, and having instilled in your servants the teachings of the Christian faith, graciously purify them by the working of this sacrifice through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. You have given your children a sacred time for the renewing and purifying of their hearts, that freed from disordered affections, they may so deal with the things of this passing world as to hold rather to the things that eternally endure. And so with all the angels and saints, we praise you as without end we acclaim. Indeed, holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness, make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, me, your unworthy servant, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. 
Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
please join in singing number 642, Love Divine, All Loves Excelling, number 642. Let us pray. We pray, Almighty God, that we may always be counted among the members of Christ, in whose body and blood we have communion, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Just a couple of announcements. It's Charitable Giving Week here at the cathedral. Please leave your, un your non-perishable food and monetary donations over at our Blessed Mother's Chapel right over there. Uh, and thank you for your generosity. As well, this coming Tuesday, uh, April 5th, at noon Mass, we will celebrate the Chrism Mass here at the cathedral, which is a very important time for the life of a diocese. It's actually my first one I'm doing publicly uh, since I've been your bishop, so uh, it'll be wonderful to have our priests here, in which we also bless and consecrate the sacred oils, and the priests renew their priestly vows, uh, promises. So I encourage you, if you're able, to please join us at noon to pray for our priests in a special way and those who will be anointed with the sacred oils uh, during this next year. The Lord be with you. With Bow down for the blessing. Bless, O Lord, your people who long for the gift of your mercy and grant that what at your prompting they desire, they may receive by your gracious, generous gift. Through Christ our Lord. And may Almighty God bless all who are gathered here the Father, 
and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go forth, the Mass is ended.